Okay, welcome back. We were looking at uh, responding. We were looking at responding skills, and uh, we looked at five uh, uh, responding skills of, of where and when and how do you uh, do you use the the skill in, in what place in what conversation do you use it? Okay. Um, before we go into maybe a, a, a like a role play. We'll just complete a few more slides and uh, then we'll take it on. So what is the, uh, when you're looking at a specific process of responding, um, let's look at it in four steps. The first one is you are taking cues. So when your counselor is communicating, you are listening and recording for certain cues. And which are the areas that you do it? In the content, that is what they're saying the words that they that they're stating uh, and uh, the the story in itself the basic information that they are giving okay the second is the feelings that is the feelings that may be stated they may be telling you they're feeling a certain way or they may imply it in the communication right um, like implying means they're not saying i feel really sad but they're saying it was a it was a terrible experience. There were so many things that went bad. They're not telling you that they're feeling a certain emotion, but they're implying it in their communication. And the third is the context. Context is you need to be aware that related to what they're saying, there may be some information that they are maybe about the past or about uh, the the setting or when it happened, how it happened. All of that. So these these are the three things: the content you listen for the content, the words that is being stated, and the meaning of those words. The second is the feeling, and the third is the context: what is happening in and around the uh, uh, the conversation, the communication that they're giving. The second thing that you look that you would do as a step is your sifting or sorting. You are looking through. It's like um, you know, let's say you have rice. If you make rice, you know, you first have to clean it off of all the stones or of all the impurities, that's it, right? You're, you're sifting or you're sorting. You're sorting through those cues to really arrive at a, uh, at about some particular information that you need to pick out. Okay, so a lot of things may be irrelevant, but you are sorting it out to pick up relevant information. And the next thing, the third thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a conclusion. You are determining what the, the essence of that conversation is. So you are formulating a sentence to yourself about what you think that you are that the counselee is trying to say. So you are drawing a conclusion. And lastly, you are expressing. You're ex expressing the essence of what was being said. You're stating the essence of that information, that chunk which you sorted out uh, to the other person in your own words so that you can check out whether or not you're understanding the other person. So you can, re you're reflecting it in words. Now, um, it's important that, that you're, you you're able to do this as as a part of listening and as you keep doing it it will become much easier for you to really pick out information that is important now suppose there is let's say two three levels of information that is being shared and you can state it out so what i heard you saying is this one thing you know you feel this about this because this happened and I also heard you saying this about this, and this is how you feel, and this is what it has meant to you. So you can you can actually break it down, especially when there's a whole lot of information and content that seems to be going on. Okay. Now it's important to um, be careful of what we call as high risk responses. Okay. So what is high-risk responses? That is, a high-risk response in listening 
is a statement which is likely to take the focus off uh, off and gen off the other and generate some negative feelings now a key element of listening is keeping the focus on the other person's thoughts and feelings okay a high risk response may not be a uh, it, it is a negative it's a it's not an effective listening reflection and people generally use high risk responses when they think they're actually listening but they aren't all right so which means you're not really listening to what is happening and it's being filtered in with your own thoughts or your own ideas okay so here are three high risk responses first one is evaluating and judging so when you evaluate as a counselor when you're evaluating and judging you're changing the focus of the conversation by shifting it from your counselee's concerns to your own interpretation or to your own judgment or to your own diagnosis and you are moving away from that uh, and and you're giving the subtle message that there's uh, that that what you're feeling is not right there's something the matter with you what you're going through is not right so when you evaluate and judge it becomes a high risk response because you're taking off the focus from the counseling and you're actually through your responses creating a negative feeling so one is evaluating and judging the second high risk response is solving okay when you're solving something for them what you're doing is you are side track you're side tracking the other person's communication by moving away immediately away to a solution before they can actually process those feelings so your questions advice ordering threatening moralizing moralizing say how can you do that this is not right in front of in the eyes of people in the eyes of god or problem sol solving can interfere with your counselees uh, exploring the thoughts and feelings that can actually help them lead to those solutions okay so using a response in this category communicates that message that you're too dumb you know you can't figure out this by yourself so i will tell you that's what you're indicating when you're giving a solution or when you're solving those problems so all of these responses um are are appropriate actually that is you know uh, when the when your counselee has finished struggling with the issue and needs help on what needs to go on so not that you know bringing about uh, uh you know suggestive uh, thoughts or suggestive uh, uh, ways of dealing with their problem is bad it's not that it is bad but then it cannot be offered uh, prematurely when they are when they are in a high emotional state is not the right time you give these high risk responses okay and the third one is withdrawing withdrawing is actually distracting your counselee from their agenda uh by actually reassuring that everything will be all right or uh you know there's nothing to worry about this and moving them from that that agenda to something else okay the message that you are trying to convey here is you know i'm very uncomfortable with what you're saying over here let's move from this to something else all right so these are what we call as high risk responses when we are evaluating when we are judging when we attempt to solve and we attempt to withdraw from a certain point or a certain issue that your counselee may want to actually share with you okay all right all right now having said this much let's probably take the next few minutes to just um to just uh, do maybe one or two quick role plays remember this is not about solving the person's problem it is to really demonstrate how we can respond to content to feeling to uh, uh content to feeling to 
um, uh, meaning and to the uh, yeah to feeling to content and to meaning. All right, so this is what we're going to do. So be careful that you don't get into this evaluation, judgment, solving, or withdrawing. Okay. So I need two volunteers and quickly. If not, I will have to call you all out. So quickly, two volunteers. One can be uh, the counselee. One can be the counsellor. You can. The counsellee can talk about. Uh, you can talk about about an assignment that is given to you. Okay, how you feel about an assignment. So you can just. Maybe it's some, a very simple topic because I, I just want us to build the ability to respond well, either an assignment or a job that's given to you that you're not very comfortable with. Something small. Okay. All right. So who's the counselee? Quickly. Okay. I'm just going to call out then if you are not going to. Uh, Shiv Kumar, would you like to be the counselee? Haven't heard your voice. And Anthony, would you like to be the counsellor? Shiv Kumar, and then okay, Anthony is the counsellor. Shiv Kumar. Okay, Shiva Kumar is in, I don't know. Ravali, you'd like to be the counselee? Okay, you may need to unmute yourselves. Uh, Ravali, are you there? Okay, all the council counselees are uh, hiding. Prabhu, would you like to be the counselee? Okay, Anand, would you please step in and be the counselee? Anand? Ma'am? You're the counselee, Anand. Uh... <laughs> you just have to talk about something, okay? Anthony is going to, is going to be reflecting your what you're saying so anand you could you could uh, you could just talk about let's say some task that you find hard some work that you find hard okay and you could begin with small smaller sentences you don't have to reveal too much uh, it's it's basically to see whether your counselor can draw out more content and information from you okay anand uh it, on, on what topic it should be, ma'am? On anything, assignment. anything, assignment, or someone's asked you to do some job in Bible college, or anything. It can be anything. Okay. Thought of something? Uh, just ten seconds. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I think I got cut off. Yes, yes. Anand and uh, Anthony, ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so go ahead, Anand. 
Anthony is ready for you. Uh, hi, Anthony. Hi, Anna. Yeah. So good to see you. Oh, sorry. Are you crying, Anna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So overwhelmed by your counselor's uh, uh, good good wish. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Hey, hi, Anthony. Glad to meet you. Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to know a few things, how to uh, solve my problems. Uh, Okay, so, you go ahead, please. I'm listening. Uh, I couldn't hear you, Anthony. Okay, can you hear me now? I say, kindly go ahead. I'm listening. It, it was fully clumsy. Okay, okay, fine. I'll speak. So, uh, what happened is, uh, I was just uh, doing a bachelor's in theology. So, I had one subject of uh, Christian counseling. So, uh, so our lecturer gave us an assignment. Uh, uh, she told us to submit by today. She gave today, but yeah, she she asked us to submit by today. And I, she gave a, <clears throat> she asked us to write uh, a counselor and counselee uh, situation like an ABCD model. Uh, like okay. she wants us to write uh, a conversation between a counselor and counselee, building up a conversation. So she asked us to submit by today, but I couldn't uh, submit because uh, it was very hard for me to think of something which is realistic. Uh, so I don't know why ma'am asked us to submit by today. I don't know. Uh, she thinking as like a counselor's professional counselor, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what to do now. Okay. Okay. So, so Anthony, uh, uh, so I'd like you to reflect or respond to content as well as feeling. So respond together. Okay. I. I can I can see that uh, the assignment must be very hard one for you. See that um, you cannot uh, you would be unable to submit this assignment today. So uh so so sorry Anthony, I couldn't hear you properly. Uh, yeah, you're not very clear, Anthony. Okay. We can hear you, but you're not very you voice is not very clear so i think it's hard to understand what you're saying would you will you go again once more will you try again anthony anthony Anand, your counselor abandoned you. Yes, ma'am. So sad. It's because you were complaining of your counseling teacher. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. Go ahead, Anjali. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, okay. we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um. So, Anand, I understand that um the assignment might be very hard for you. And uh, given the deadline that uh, you must submit this assignment today, um, did you talk to any of your classmates if they could help you out, or you don't want anybody to help you out with the assignment? Uh, Anthony, hang on, hang on, hang on. So they're not looking for. Remember, we said high risk response. A high risk response is finding some way to solve it we're not looking at that right now all that we're looking okay. to doing is just responding to 
the difficulty, the feeling, the content. That's all. That's all that we are doing right now. Okay. So what you said was good. You said, I see that you have that you're finding it hard to do the task given to you. And the fact that you have a deadline, it's uh, you said that, that it's it's difficult to complete the deadline. So that's good. Okay. Uh, what kind of a feeling do you sense that he is expressing? Mm. The feeling he's expressing, I can see um, lack of uh, confidence. Okay. Good. Okay. So, would you like to put it across in a sentence to him to to uh, to understand if the accuracy of your of your uh, of your interpretation you're you're interpreting that he feels lack of confidence. So, can you express that to him? Because you need to feel need to understand if what you have understood is accurate from Anand. So yeah, bring up your next next statement. OK. Um, I can really see that um, you've been given a short time, like a uh, deadline for you to submit your assignment. So um, would you like to go over the notes again? And maybe. Okay, Anthony, there again, here again, you're going into a solution. You're giving him some solution. Uh, what we're looking at is just staying focused on the emotion. So, okay, let, let me help you here. So, Anand, uh, I, I sense that you're feeling pressured to complete this assignment by today and you're quite annoyed or quite upset with your teacher for not giving you enough time yes, because you feel is that so yes ma'am okay so so anthony did you what what was done here is just responded to i i said okay maybe you're annoyed at your teacher and you're feeling you're not feeling confident enough to do this. Did you get that, Anthony? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. OK, so so Anand, I'm, I'm going to continue going ahead, OK? So Anand, you said you're feeling not feeling confident and not feeling, you're feeling quite annoyed. So can you help me understand what is bringing about this lack of confidence to do this. What is the struggle you're feeling? That's uh, uh, that this that the lack of confidence. What is the struggle you're coming across because of this lack of confidence? Oh, uh, it's it's not about confidence and all, but okay. um, the thing is, we have to submit by today. So. Okay. Uh, if 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 we have to write a little more practical, so we should need some time. Okay, all right. So you're saying it's not so, Anthony. Okay, you want to take on yes. from here. Take on from here. Okay, ma. Okay. So Anand, you said um, it is um, lack of time. Yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have time. Okay, so Anthony, what did so you understand when, here? One one minute. So you understood. So you made a uh, inference that there was lack of confidence, and he was annoyed at his teacher. That's the inference we made. But when we brought yeah. it out again, he said, "No, it is not about confidence." I. So, which means he could probably have the confidence. He said, it's just the fact that he is pressured on time. So, he's given you clarity that it is not confidence. All right? Okay, but he but he himself has said, I think there's a pressure of time. All right? Okay. So, yes, you've, you have narrowed it down to understand that 
this is nothing to do with him being unable to do it. It is the pressure of the external circumstance that's there. You've understood that. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Right. Now, I'm yeah. going to the, I'm just going to help you with the second question, this thing that he said about annoyance. Okay? All right. So, so Anthony, you did, uh, you know, I, I do see that you feel a little annoyed at your teacher for having given you this assignment at, uh, uh, you know, at very short notice. Is that so? Yeah. Sam, you're speaking with me? No, no, Anthony was speaking. No, go ahead. Go Anthony ahead. was speaking. Go ahead, go ahead uh, to uh, to to share. Uh, Anthony, it's I'm not annoyed and all. Every time when she used to give a, as an assignment, she used to give us time. But I don't know what happened today. Uh, there are some students that are not responding in the class. Maybe because of that, <laughs> she would have given one day time to submit. I don't know. <laughs> But it was very hard for us to just submit in one day. Anthony. Okay. Anthony, tell so me. So he's clarified two things, Anthony. He's clarified there's no underconfidence. Yes, he's clarified there is no annoyance with the teacher. It is puzzling to him. So now, now you're you're getting another emotion. Right? Which is? Yes, ma'am. So you may ask something like, okay, Anand, what I hear right now is it's very puzzling to you why your teacher did that when all the time she has actually given you enough time to finish your assignment. Right? So again, content and feeling. It's puzzling to him that uh, the, the teacher has done something which he's never done before. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. What, what would you like to bring about? Is there anything that you would like to bring about for responding? Or do you feel you've come to the end of you can't respond any further now? Okay. I would like to ask him a question. Hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Anna, when you said um, uh, it was... Um, lack of time so was it that um, the question of all the assignments was a little bit uh, uh, of a technical issue that you might have that's why <clears throat> you lack the time to do to finish the assignment Uh, Anand, Anthony, can you please repeat? Uh, so he said, he said, Anand, he's saying, uh, since you did say it was a lack of time, was it, well, did you find it difficult to understand the assignment? Uh, or, uh, yeah, were there, were there any technical reasons as to why you were not able to understand the assignment? Is what yeah, he asked. I understood the assignment, but for so to do complete the assignment, I need more time because uh, if I have to complete in one day, I need some persons to sit with me and help and can discuss and do the assignment. If it is, if I have to submit by today, I can't do it by alone. Okay, so Anthony here, he's come to the place of action because he himself has told you, uh, I need help if I need to do it today, right? He's also said if I, or that I should have more time or I need the help of friends. So he's himself has come up with three possible solutions. You got that, Anthony? Yes, ma. Yeah, okay. So now, uh, now we've, I think we've come up, I know the, the, the situation is really small, so that's why you may not be able to respond too much. But you can go up to ask him about, OK, Anand, um, I'll help you here. So Anand, uh, you've, you've come up with some wonderful thoughts. You've said that either you need time, or if you need to complete it today, you need the help of some friends. Or uh, you, know, you, may, you may require some more days to do this. So he's himself. So I would ask him, 
So Anand, which of these three uh, possible uh, uh, solutions would you think would help you the most, Anand? Anthony, uh, what's the situation here is uh, there are no friends who are willing to help me because uh, they were also in the same situation. So why I came uh, to you is I heard Anthony is a good counselor and he is very good at these things. So that's why I came to you that you can help me in my assignment. Your counselor has ran away. <laughs> Anthony, he wants you to do the assignment for him. <laughs> OK, that would be fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anthony. <laughs> OK, all right, OK. so. So if so, if you had come to me like this, Anand, I would have I would have asked you directly. I said, so Anand, are you hoping that I would do your assignment for you? No, ma'am. Uh, like I I I was I came to you to just to seek your help. Okay. I believe that you can help me. Okay. All right. Okay. So you said two three things, Anand. You said one that you may need time. You said you may need the help of your friends, and you mentioned that uh, that your helps your friends may not help you because they are all in the same situation. So I see you feel helpless. You cannot even get the help of other friends right now. It it makes you feel helpless because even your friends aren't able to help you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. So I understand that you and your friends are in the same position. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what are the two choices that are left? Or the choice that is left, Anand? You helping us, ma'am. Uh, no, I mean for you to, you said two things. You said time, to yeah. be able to get some time, mm. right? Or to, to get the help of your friends. That's what you said. And you said your friends are also in the same situation. So what is left? What is the option that's left for you? Uh, I feel like if there is no one to help me, uh, I, I'm, I'd like to ask uh, my lecturer to give us more time to complete oh. our assignment. Wonderful. OK. So when would you like to approach your lecturer for, for this request? I don't know. She'll respond or <laughs> not. Mm -hmm. So do you, I sense that you fear that she will, she may not respond favorably, yeah. is it? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Why do you think she, she would, she may not respond favorably if, if you were to tell her what you're feeling and where you're stuck at, what, what makes you feel she may not respond favorably? Because, uh, and, uh, what I shared earlier is like, she used to give us time every time. Uh, when she gives the assignment, uh, if if now she is not giving us the time, if she told us to do it in one day, maybe she is strict and uh, she she wanted us to submit by today. Mm -hmm. mm. So you're telling me that you cannot you 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 fail to understand what is what actually has made your lecturer do this right now. Yeah. And, uh, so today, my mom asked some questions. No one responded in the class. Uh -huh. so that's why she would have gave us the assignment and asked us to submit by today. OK, so did your mom tell you that she was upset with you, and that's why she's given you the assignment for one day? She didn't tell, but I felt like that. I you understood. felt like that. OK, so if you needed to really understand that's what she meant, what would you need to do, Anand? Uh, maybe I, anyhow, I have to complete the assign, complete the assignment or mm -hmm. next class, we all have to speak with our ma'am. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the next thought you're saying, maybe everyone coming together to speak to her. If you are not able to find, finish the assignment today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So how does that that sound to you? How, do, do you feel that is addressed? You know what to do? Mm, yeah, kind of. Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much, uh, the councillor. You you drove away your councillor, Anand, with the complexity of your situation. Ari, oh, he's sorry. there. Oh, Anthony, he's there. He's there. <laughs> Ari, okay. Anthony. Very, very good, both Anand and um, Anthony. Anthony, good try. Good try. OK. Uh, Thank you, Anand. <laughs> Okay, let I have a couple more of slides to complete in the same topic and then yeah, so just give me a minute. Let me just put this up. Okay. So what do we do when there are clients who are challenging? Okay. So what do we mean by clients who are challenging are those who may be difficult, who may not be very forthcoming with their, um, with, with their information. Uh, 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 what do we do? How can we respond? Like, for example, maybe some of them who are just, just don't respond. They're sitting in front of you that are absolutely silent. They're not saying anything. OK, what do you do? So who are these challenging clients when they are unresponsive or when they're silent? Or when sometimes they superficially agree that you know they want to come in for help or want to come in for counseling, but actually they're not, uh, they're not fully there. They're not fully open to, to hearing or to uh, open to even share. Uh, the other kind of people are those who do not come in on their own will. You know, they are bought in by somebody else or those who are threatened by someone to come for counseling. It may be it's a parent or it's a colleague or it's a leadership. It's a management that who that they want that, that they've asked to come or those who have biases about counseling. They are there, but they have very strong conceptions about what counseling is. OK, um, you, you need to understand that, you know, especially when people don't come on their own, the premise with which they come is they are expecting uh, the counselor also to, to criticize them and be focused on their weakness, all right? That, that the, that the counts, counselor will highlight whatever their weakness is. So that's why they... Most of them come, especially when when they when they uh, counselees who don't come on their own wish or on their own desire. Uh, you will find that they are expecting uh, something negative coming from the counselee counsellor, or something uh, where their weakness is going to be highlighted. Why? Because the general environment around when they are actually talking to people around, that is what they're hearing. Everyone is criticizing them for their issue or you know, focusing on what is going wrong. So they think that even coming here to a counselor would probably be the same thing. So how do you respond to counselees who are challenging? What can we do? So when confronted with someone who's challenging, uh, the first thing counselors should do is to focus on your own self-awareness. So you look at yourself and see how you are contributing to that environment which can be seen as threatening to your counseling. OK, so when they're coming in, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, am I, what contribution am I making to make this environment for my counselee threatening for them? All right, because when you're able to do that, when you're able to look at yourself and how you are contributing, you will be able to respond in a certain way that allows your counselee to slowly, uh, what do you say, um, uh, to, to slowly open up. OK, so that's the first thing that you do. Uh, look at yourself, be more aware of how you may be contributing to that. Like, for example, let's say a person like a young person, like a young 20, 21 year old is brought by his parents to the room and asked you to see them because, because there are so many problems with him and he needs help. 
and this boy is sitting there or girl is sitting there in front of you uh, not not saying anything in fact they're looking away okay now if i were to ask questions like okay um, what's going on what's happening or what's wrong tell me what's wrong uh, what is the environment that i have provided by the question if i'm going to ask them what is wrong what um, what interpretation have i already made to the client to the counselee or what impression have i made to the uh, counselee what do you think if i ask the question so generally that question is not too bad you know i'd like to know what's wrong like if, if there's someone who's coming willingly that question is not too much a bad question but in a setting like this when the person doesn't want to be there and you ask okay tell me what's wrong uh, what's going on with you or uh, what has brought you here what's wrong what do you think uh, it could sound off like to the counselee think and tell me Come on, come on, come on. Quick thoughts. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on. When you ask someone who doesn't want to be there in front of you, what's wrong? What impression or what message are you giving them? No, no, no thoughts. OK, so an impression that can come about is I have already made an inference that there is something wrong with the person sitting in front of me. When I ask the question, what's wrong? Yeah, they feel judged. Yes, I've already. Uh, yes, I'm frowning at their character. I'm saying something. Uh, that there is something wrong with you and that's why you're sitting here. So, hey, tell me, what's wrong? Right? I have, I have probably done nothing to connect with the person. All right? So, if you do see someone who's resisting, the first thing you need to do is join them as an ally. Okay? That, that they need to know that you are with them. And they shouldn't see you as a problem. They shouldn't see you as another problem. OK? So how you do that is one way, one way that you can do that is saying, um, I, can, I can see that uh, you know, uh, this must be a very uncomfortable, very, very difficult uh, situation for you. Uh, and you know, you're sitting here not not really on your own will, but being pushed and forced by your parents. I can imagine how difficult that may be. Right. So what am I doing? I am aligning myself with him and saying, it may be very hard for you to just come here being pushed by your parents. It's hard. So I am trying my best to say, hey, I'm on your side. OK, I'm on your side. And I'm OK uh, to, to uh, to have you this way, no, no, no problem, right? So that's what you are attempting to communicate. The next thing that you will do is give them the power, give them back the power. So concede the power of your counselee. It will actually bring down their defenses. So what does that mean? Saying that, you know, um, uh, I'm perfectly okay if if you feel today is not the right time to talk or right time to. Uh, share anything. I'm perfectly okay that you, uh, you know, that that you don't uh, do that, right? So I have said it's perfectly okay. You have the power to decide whether you want to share something or not. All right. So that's what you're doing. You you give them the decision in their hands to um, uh, whether they want to speak about the situation or not. But I may say something like you know it's perfectly okay 
if uh, you don't want to talk about anything. Um, but would you be fine if, if we just could have a simple chat just to know each other a little better? So what I've said is, OK, it's perfectly OK there. But I'm, I'm engaging the person to build a rapport. I'm saying, would you be OK if we got to know each other a little bit? Right? Uh, or they may say, no, I don't. I don't, I don't want to get to know you. Well, so I may say, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. So I'm going to head in and say, you know, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. Or I may say, I'd like to share a little bit about a time when I had a situation like yours. Right? So something that will help them to see that I'm building a rapport, but that they have the power in their hands. And the last one is to put them at ease, letting them know that they don't have to really vent out everything the first time. So sharing with them and saying, you know, it's perfectly fine to do it at your own pace. Whenever you feel you are comfortable to share something, uh, you know, that would be probably the best things to do. You know, so take it at your own pace, take it at your own time. Okay. So what would you be doing? is so. okay so what you're doing is when you're responding to them you are focusing a lot on uh, their own strengths right the fact that he knows when he needs to talk about his problem that's what i i mean to say focusing on the strength at that time or I'm engaging in active listening. Now, this listening is not just by what they're saying, but even their body language. Okay, so they may be looking away, they may be looking down, they may be, uh, you know, uh, looking at their phone. It it gives you a message. When they're looking down, it may see that, seem that they're probably upset or anxious. When they're looking on their phone, they show they're disinterested. When they're looking away, they are being indifferent. So it gives you a clear understanding about about observing their external uh, behavior, OK? Uh, when you respond, you are also saying, you're also sharing that they are the experts of their lives, right? Saying that, hey, you know, uh, I'm sure you, 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 you definitely know what is best for you, or you know what is the right thing to do. And the fact that your parents brought you in here has definitely violated that right. You know? So I'm emphasizing that you know what is the right thing to do. And remember, whatever they do to you or whatever they say to you, don't take it personally because it is their defense that is coming about so that they can take care of themselves, right? Because you know, if you are pushed into something you don't want to do, you will definitely be defensive. And it has nothing to do with the person there, but you are defending yourself. So don't take it personally if, uh, if they're, if, because they're just showing uh, they are just uh, uh, they are just exhibiting their defenses okay and so what are the skills that are needed the skills that are needed especially when you're dealing with uh, clients who are extremely resistant is one give empathy okay express empathy um, it is important to let them know that you're there feeling with them avoid argumentation do not argue with them why aren't you talking you know what is wrong with you this is why you have such a why your parents have a problem with you avoid argumentation okay roll with resistance that means you play along with them okay like for example uh, it, it's you say you, you may let's say your counsel is saying my mother thinks that i have a problem but she's wrong i do not want to stop drinking uh, as I said, I do, I do not have a drinking problem. So she is very clearly said, I don't have a drinking problem. I want to drink when I feel like it. So as a counselor, you may say, OK, others may think you have a problem, but I, but I hear that you, you, know, you, you feel you don't. Right. So then the counselor may say, that's right. My mother thinks that I have a problem, but she is wrong. Right? So, so these are ways that how you would roll with with them with that resistance okay uh recognizing their strengths right so where, this is where you um you help them not to focus on their negative things but to focus on 
what seems positive. Okay. So the like, for example, let's say the counselor is saying, you know, I'm wondering uh, if you can help me. I have failed so many times. So one thing the counselor can say is, um, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I see that you feel you have failed, but the fact is that you're still here. You know, you have come here, hoping that things will be get uh, will get better. So as long as you know you continue to stay in the process and to having someone support you, do you think success will come about? So what I'm doing is I've taken this thing about her failure and made it into something as a success, saying that you know even though you failed many times, you've come back here because you want to help yourself. How can that you know how can you stay in that process? So that's what I attempt to engage with them to add to that. So these are some of the ways that you can. You know, you you respond to your counselees even when they are resistant. Okay, all right. Okay, any I've come to the end. Any specific thoughts? Any questions that you may have? Nothing? OK. If not, let's just close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you're teaching us, that uh, you help us build these skills on how to work with people, really taking time to listen and respond and reflect to what they may be going through, their feelings, their stages of emotional pain. Father, we pray that you will help us to be patient listeners, patient uh, uh, helpers who can journey with people through their struggles and their problems. Maybe not get quick into finding solutions, but being willing to stick with people through what they're going through. Thank you for all that you teach us. Thank you for all that uh, you work in us. Be with us till we meet next time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Meet you all next week. God bless.